Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, the United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. In a world of doubting Thomases decades ago, it never would have been possible for stars to shine in the daytime. But in this day and atomic age, anything's possible. Thus, it's not only possible, but a fact that only on stations of the CBS radio network, stars do indeed shine in the daytime. And they're stars of the first magnitude, one and all. You'll find them illuminating an entire segment of your daytime listening every Monday through Friday. These stars have all been named by celestial authority vested in their forebears. Those names are Arthur Godfrey, Art Linkletter, Bing Crosby, Rosemary Clooney, Gary Moore, and Derwood Kirby. You won't find them in your book of the planets and stars, but no compendium of show business luminaries would be complete without them. Monday through Friday, your radio set is your personal telescope on this star-studded display on your CBS radio station. To list them once again, Arthur Godfrey, Art Linkletter, the house party man, Bing Crosby and Rosemary Clooney in tandem, and Gary Moore and Derwood Kirby. Enjoy them often. Well, Matt, thanks for riding up. Glad to, George. There's one man I'd like to catch. Come on, Chester. Yes, sir. Bye, Sheriff. Yeah, so long, Chester. You take care of that hat. Yeah, oh, sure thing, Sheriff. I'll do that. All right, let's get going, Chester. Just what incarnation did he mean about my hat? Well, it's brand new, isn't it? Well, yes, sir, but I don't know it's any of his business. You know, Chester, when a man goes around wearing the same hat for ten years and then comes out with a new one, it's bound to be noticed. Now, that ain't so. I couldn't have had that other in more than seven or eight years. There was lots of wear in that hat yet, too. If it hadn't fell off that hook on top of that stove... You'd be wearing it yet, I know. Well, at least you got something out of the ride up here. We sure didn't get very close to that gang fella, did we? Yeah, he headed in another direction. You reckon he might turn up around Dodge? I don't know, Chester. I sure hope so. Too bad about Paul getting killed in that holdup. Shot in the back to boot. Yeah. That gang fella mustn't be worth much to do a thing like that. He's worth a lot to me, Chester. A lot. I know how you feel, Matt, but I'm just as glad you didn't run into him. Uh, you haven't got eyes in the back of your head, you know. I wouldn't want to turn my back on Gans, Kitty. Well, not if you knew it, no, but... Oh, his Doc. Yeah, hello, Kitty. Matt. Hi, uh, Doc. Sit down, Doc. Oh, thank you, thank you, Kitty. Oh. You have a rough day? And night. I've been out there with Nettie Morby. She's been awfully sick. Nettie? Oh, sorry to hear about that. Trouble is, she's all alone out there. She should stay down, have complete rest. But without somebody to look after her, I, I just don't know. Oh, where's Luke? Oh, he's off somewhere. He's gone as much as his home, you know. You want me to help you bring her to town, Doc, where somebody can look after her? No, no, thank you, Mitch. She can't be moved just yet. Doc? Uh, yes, Kitty? Is there any reason I couldn't take care of her? Why, no, there isn't anything difficult about it, Kitty. She just needs somebody to see she gets her meals and stays warm. You thinking of going out there, Kitty? Yeah, I am. Nettie and I have always been good friends. I don't want her lying out there alone with no one around to take care of her. Say, you should get better a lot faster, Kitty. 
There's no question about that. Well, I'll get my things. You going right now? She'll need some supper, won't you, Doc? Yes, Kitty, she will. Well, no sense waiting, then. I'll ride out with you, then, Kitty. Thanks, Matt. I won't be long. Today's United States Air Force is one of the greatest forces for peace in the world. The key to this air power is manpower. The men and women in Air Force Blue. Young ladies, if you have college training and want an important position with executive responsibility, why not investigate opportunities as an officer in the WAF, the women in the Air Force? WAF officers work in vital, interesting fields, such as weather, personnel, aircraft control and warning, intelligence and research and development. If qualified, you'll enjoy all the prestige and pay of an Air Force officer. And you'll have a chance for exciting world travel. Enjoy a full social life, plus 30-day annual paid vacations. Then, too, you'll wear the fashionable, attractive WAF officer uniforms. It can be a wonderful world for you as a well-paid officer in the WAF, the women in the Air Force. See your local Air Force recruiter for all the particulars. Come on now, Nettie. Finish this gruel. There. Now, take just a little bit more. It's, it's right tasty, Kitty. <laughs> you don't have to pretend to like it, Nettie, but it'll put some strength into you. There. You did a good job on that. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm sure beholden to you, Kitty, for all you've done. <laughs> Forget it, Nettie. Us women have to stick together. I'd, I'd have been a sorry one without you the last two, three days. I, I was weaker than a newborn. It was a fine time for Luke to be gone, I'll say that. Well, he didn't know I was going to be took sick, Kitty. He's been gone a lot, isn't he, Nettie? Well, it's, it's as though he has to ride off come a certain time. You know, like he can't stand the land no more. Well, it hasn't been easy for you to stand either. No. No, Kitty, it ain't. But when a woman chooses her man, she chooses his way of life. Ain't nobody saying it's going to be easy. You're too good for him. Oh, so I ain't all that good. And Luke, Luke ain't all that bad either. Prairie's a hard place. Makes hard people. You're not hard, Nettie. You can't tell me that. Uh, a woman is as hard as she has to be. Except when she's took sick. She ain't worth much then, I grant you. Oh, that's foolish talk. I'll take the dish back and then I'll fix you for the night. Oh, there's no need to fuss. I can... That's Luke. Hmm? That's Luke. He's coming. You sure? It's him, all right. A woman gets to know. Yeah, I guess she does. He's gone into the barn. He'll be here in a minute. Uh, Kitty. Uh, yeah, Nettie. Would you, would you straighten me up a little bit? I don't want to look no worse than I am. Sure, Nettie. Sure. I, I ain't never had no looks, but a woman ought to be presentable. Ah, you look fine. I'll go let him in. You'll be wondering about your horse. Hello, Luke. How come you're here? Nettie's sick. Come in. Now, Nettie ain't never ailing. Well, she is now. I'll go see. Hello, Luke. Are you bad, Nettie? I'm, I'm all right. I had real good nursing she been here long? Three days. She can go now. I'm in no hurry, Luke. I can stay till Nettie's up and around. You ain't needed no more. Now, now, Luke, there ain't no call for being unfriendly. I thank her for looking after you. Now she can go. Nettie? It, it, it's all right, Kitty. I, I'll make out all right. You send for me if you need me. She won't be needing you. I wish I were as sure about that as you are. <laughs> Hi, 
I swear to goodness, you two are sitting here as though you hadn't moved since I last saw you. Hello, Doc. Hi, Doc. Sit down. Oh, you can sit. Say, I'm surprised to see you here, Kitty. She owns the place, Doc. I thought you'd still be at Nettie Morby. Well, so did I, Doc, but her husband came home and said they didn't meet me anymore. Luke? Luke. I shouldn't think he'd be very handy at caring for anything. Well, I offered to stay as long as she needed me, but he seemed awful anxious for me to go, so I left. Well, how was she when you left? Well, she's doing better, Doc. She just started to eat a little. She certainly wasn't very strong. Oh. I wish I could go by and see her tomorrow, but I can't. And why not, Doc? I promised that new young doctor at Hayes City that I'd come up and assist him at an operation, and he just won't wait. Well, I could go back out if you think it'd help. Oh, no, I hate to have you make that trip again, Kitty, but you might be able to keep her from doing too much and going into a relapse. Oh, I don't mind, Doc. It might be a great help, Kitty. All right, Doc, that's settled. It's beginning to look like you missed your calling, Kitty. You should have been a nursemaid. Oh, you know better than that, Matt. <laughs> I guess you're right. I won't be able to ride out early in the morning, Kitty. I'm expecting a prisoner. Oh, that's all right. I'll see you when I get back. All right, Kitty. And uh, I'll try to drum up some nursing business for you here in Dodge, huh? You do, and you'll need some nursing yourself. wanted to be sure Luke was taken good care of. Yes, yes, he's, he's taken care of me just fine. There's no need for you to stay. Well, then I can just pass the time of day. I, I don't feel much like talking. Nothing's the matter, Nettie. What is it? No, no, it, it ain't nothing, Kitty. It, it, it's just I don't feel like visiting. Uh, there ain't nothing for you to do around here. It's, uh, you might as well run along before dark. It won't be dark for hours, Nettie, and you know it. Kitty, listen to me. You told me there wouldn't be nobody coming by. What are you doing back here, Kitty? I came to see how Nettie was getting along. Now, I told you we didn't need you. Please, Kitty, just go along. A little late for that. Who are you? D don't ask no questions, Kitty. Luke didn't do nothing. Luke, what is all this? You're asking the wrong man, lady. All right, then you tell me. I'll tell you that you just stay here and keep quiet until I'm ready to go. That's all you need to know. Don't let her go. She ain't hurting nothing. And let her tell everybody I'm here? You used to be smarter than that, Nettie. Luke, we got no right to keep Kitty from going back. Luke, make her shut up. You do like he says, Nettie. You ain't never raised a hand to me, Luke Morby. He'd do it if I said so. Wouldn't you, Luke? Wouldn't you, Luke? Oh, for heaven's sake, stop acting like children. You want me to show you that I ain't no child, lady? All right, then, you stay quiet. And don't try to get away, then nobody will get hurt. Is it all right if I watch after her? Yeah, sure. You watch after her, and maybe you can watch after me some on the side. Don't hold your breath. <laughs> Crime, delinquency, threats of war. These are the subjects that dominate our news headlines these days. Not very pleasant subjects, are they? You may say that somebody ought to do something about cutting down on crime and delinquency and in promoting peace among nations, but that there's nothing you personally can do about it. That's where you're wrong. You can wage your own fight against crime and delinquency in your own family by taking the family to the church or synagogue of your faith this week. Worshiping together brings your family closer together, too. And supporting your own religious institution provides funds to help those individuals and families who, unlike you, are unable to help themselves. Find the strength for your life. Worship together this week. Well, it seems to me that the U.S. Marshal ought to be able to do something about it. Yeah, well, you tell me this, Dobie. Do you want me to stop the cattle drives from going through Dodge? 
Stop the cattle drives? No, no, of course not. You people at Dodge make a little money off of them, don't you? Well, yes, of course we do, but I don't see why we have to put up with cowboys carousing in the streets. You can't have oh. a cattle drive without cowboys. Well, there ought to be something in it. Mr. You Dillon? Get... Mr. Dillon? Yeah, Chester, what is it? Mr. Dillon, excuse me, Mr. Dillon. Well, you just go right ahead, Chester. I'm leaving anyway. I'm getting no place here. Marshal? So long, Toby. All right, Chester, what's on your mind? It's Miss Kitty. What about Kitty? Well, I've just come from the Long Branch, Miss Dillon, and they're kind of worried about her. Well, what's the matter with her? Well, that's just it. They don't know. She didn't come back last night. Oh, she probably decided to stay the night with Nettie Morby. Yeah, but they say she said she wasn't going to. She was supposed to see a whiskey drummer this morning, a, a fellow who was just going to be in Dodge this one day. They think it's a funny thing that she didn't show up. Well, she probably just changed her mind, Chester. Women do that, you know. Yes, sir. But, uh... You might as well get the horses. We'll take a look out toward the Morby place anyway, huh? Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. Well, I'm glad you decided to come, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. There's just an awful lot of things that can happen to a woman off alone. Kitty can take pretty good care of herself, Chester. Oh, yeah, sure she can. But what if her horse ran away with her? Uh-huh. Uh, and what if it throwed her? Well, there's not much chance of that. No, Mr. Dillon, anybody can get thrown. Well, I'm on that Wilkins boy, and he was a real good rider. All right, too. Chester, all right. She's been thrown. We'll find out. The Morby place ain't too far from here, is it, Mr. Dillon? Around the bend and back on the roadways. You know, I, I I wasn't worried too much when we started, but the longer we've rode, the more worrying I've did. You've talked yourself into it. Well, now I talk about something else, huh? Well, I ain't thinking about anything then else. Then just don't talk. <laughs> Marshal. Oh, oh, I was here. Now let go, Joe. I didn't tell him. I haven't even seen nobody. Now you know that. Then what is she coming here for? Well, it's her. It's who? It's that Kitty. The Marshal's always hanging around with her. He'd come after her. He'd come after Kitty? Sure. Well, he dead nice. Kitty? What? Come here. Out the window. It's about time he came after you. Luke tells me you're a real good friend. What friends? Well, you can just save your friend's life if you behave yourself. What do you mean? You go out there on the porch and you do just what I say. This is a trick. Better than standing here watching me shoot him, ain't it? All right, then, go on. Go out on the porch and keep your mouth shut. I don't see this kid's horse tied up no worse. Well, the tracks lead up here. It may be in the barn. Mm, yes, I guess it could be. Look yonder, Mr. Dillon. What? That's Miss Kitty coming out on the porch. Well, I guess she ain't hurt none. I guess not. You stand out here for good, Kitty? Don't come any closer, Matt. Well, why not? Because I stay not, long man. So who are you? My name's Joe Gant, Marshal, and I ain't even to let you do nothing about it. Gant? Well, Mr. Dillon, yes, you Chester, never mind. Tell me that you're good friends with this little lady. Real good friends. What about it? Well, I figure you wouldn't want to see her get hurt, so I figure you'll play along. Going to come out and get your gun. I'm not. Mr. Dillon, he shot right next to her foot. Shoot much closer to her than that, Marshal. Do what he says, Kitty. All right. That's far enough. Now you two, throw down 
your gun, both of you. Miss Dillon? I've got a real good feed on her back. Put on your gun, Chester. All right, little lady, pick them up and bring them back to me. Matt? Do what he says, Kitty. Just hold everything right like it is. Eddie. Drop your gun. Mr. Dillon? Yeah. Now walk to you. Miss Morby's holding a shotgun on him. You take this man away from here, Marshal. You just take him away from here. I'll do that, Miss Morby. I didn't know you were so handy with a gun. I ain't never picked up one before, Marshal Dillon. But I don't hold with bloodshed. But it seemed this was the only way to stop it. It was a good way, Miss Morby. I don't know what'll happen to Luke or me. But I couldn't have no bloodshed, Marshal Dillon. I just don't hold with it. Don't worry about it, Miss Morby. You probably saved you and Luke a lot of trouble. Uh, we could borrow a couple of horses, ma'am. We'll be heading back to Dodge. Of course, Marshal. You feel like riding, Kitty? Sure. Take charge of Gans, will you, Chester? Yes, sir. All right, Gans. It's a long way back to Dodge. Let's go. Hi, this is Dennis James with a longtime favorite. Yes, the longtime favorites are usually the best, aren't they? And one favorite folks have relied on over the years is Kellogg's All Brand. Since 1919, America's favorite natural laxative cereal. Kellogg's All Brand is the safe, gentle way to overcome irregularity caused by lack of bulk in your diet. It tastes good, too, and it, it never gets mushy in milk. There's only one All Brand, Kellogg's All Brand. So relieve constipation the way millions do with Kellogg's All Brand. A double L hyphen B R A N. Yes, you're so right to stay regular with Kellogg's All Brand. Try it, okay? Okay. Gunsmoke. Produced and directed in Hollywood by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Marion Clark, with editorial supervision by John Meston. Featured in the cast were Virginia Christine, Barney Phillips, John Daner, and Vic Perrin. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. This is George Walsh inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents another story on Gunsmoke. CBS News goes double for you every day on the CBS Radio Network.